Hello, critic time. Today I wanna do it for a map because yesterday we did it for the what was it? Bomb saw of the medic. So I was talking about this on stream today. today and I, maybe I'll just do it right now. Uh, how about the map? Cough. We already knew it's cough. Uh, Conking. You already knew it's cough because I only play cough. Almost always. So, okay. Disclaimers as usual. Uh, this is not about game design per se. I'm going to talk a little bit about it, but uh, an in depth discussion would be another kind of video. And also. I'm gonna be following Feldman's method for this art critique, which involves four steps in order. The description, then the analysis, then the interpretation, then the judgment. Step. <laughs> the, from the description, I'm gonna describe what I see. On the analysis, I'm gonna talk about the elements of art. On the interpretation, I will interpret the creative vision behind the art. And on the judgment step, I'm gonna call this successful or unsuccessful art basing myself on the principles of art. So, without further ado, let's begin. Description What do I see? We're in some sort of storage room, right? We have like uh, some crates and st stuff stashed over there. There's like a map and bucket, and there is a shelf here with some more crates and stuff. Open locker, bench and towels as usual, uh, another area here. Oh look, you can see kind of an office. Also with uh, all these like uh, tapes and some machines and a door. There is even a right tape recorder there, so maybe this spy will pass it through. Uh, some pipes, box. What else? There is the locker with the munitions and medical supplies. This scale. I think it's uh, Some windows, what else? The wall here seems to be made out of, of concrete. You know, the usual. And here, oh, where are we? We're in a metropolis, whatever, a city full of, of neon <laughs> and signs everywhere, and they are in Chinese. I believe these are Chinese ideograms because they are kind of blocky and, com and very dense in the line per space ratio, let's say. Although, Stuff like this one, I think. <coughs> also, the name Kong King reminds you of Hong Kong, right? Uh, what else? And here it's written red. So yeah, we have all these skyscrapers and with uh, windows. Some are turned off, some are turned on. The lights, <laughs> the lights turned on or not or off. Here we have an alley with uh, more crates and boxes. We have a beer one here, I guess. Some sort of oxygen uh, tank here, C cylinder, uh, trash cans. Here, if we go through this dark alley, there are more of this stuff on the stuff on the ground. Is there is there is a there is a street here, I guess. <laughs> Sewers entrance, but it's blocked off on this part. Keep out! Oh, we can't go over there. There is a buzz here. NJ six five three D. Okay. A lot of signs, since I don't know Chinese, I want to be... I want... To... For, uh, if this was like a written critique, it, it, we should totally like get to each character and translate them, but for the stream, it's gonna... that would take a, a while. And yeah, there are some limitations in doing critiques on stream. Any kind of research gets, you know, kind of... Uh, Hampered, you know, because it's not fun to just like sit me researching, reading and stuff. Well, maybe you'll have fun with that, but that's not the stream that I set out to do here. So, what else? Uh, some kind of garage door here, thingy. Uh, hey, an AC. What else? Uh, here, over here, there's another alley to go about in the city behind this gate this time, which is also blocked off. Some uh, restaurants, maybe stores. You know, if the 
the Hadling, the Dar, and stuff like that. Over here, we have like this bridge. Uh, would, this, would this be a viaduct? I don't know. Some sort of stairs, another dark alley with. <laughs> where they take out the trash, I guess. 11C. On that bus, anything else on this general area? Oh, bookshop! So this one, we know what it is because it's in English. There's the translation. The pickups there. The pill for the small ammo pack, and they're literally the crate full of uh, with rockets and the uh, bullet belts for the heavy. What else? Uh, here it's also blocked off. There is like a escalator. Uh, is it the escalator that you say? I think it is. An escalator to go there, but it's blocked off. Over here, this part of the street is also blocked around, blocked off. What else? And over here, like uh, some set of stairs and a turned off escalator. And we got into this middle part rocket noodle. Oh, so this one <laughs> sells rocket noodles. Maybe this soldier owns this place. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, or either that or maybe he must love going there. What else? Night shop. Night shop. Okay, good to see that uh, the idea of. This being like stars and stuff is confirmed for some of the build of the signs. Uh, also, these ones have like arrows to them, right? Uh, this one says something about right here, I guess. If you go here, caution, do not enter. Pipes and uh, some sort of duct, something. Oh, we have some sort of uh, gouges and buttons and uh, controllers here. Or something, I don't know, gas from these pipes or water, something like that, or some other fluid. Maybe oil, <laughs> we are gonna be rich, I don't know. <laughs> so, and over here, you can see there is also like these plants, and there is this. Uh, what's the name of this? I'm trying to remember, gazebo. <laughs> Not sure if this is a gazebo, but you know, it's there is this structure with the roof on top. The Chinese silk lanterns, I believe. Silk lanterns. Um, the hologram yellow in the control point with the metal plate. What else? Da -da 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 -da. And uh, also, ooh, this is a pet shop, maybe. More pickups. This time there is the small ammo box. A small box. Uh, oh, this star maybe sells fish. If you go here, uh, yeah, it's probably like closed, but during the day we probably sell fish, sell fish, some outlets, more doors and stuff, a, a fuse box, a bit weirdly placed maybe, but yeah, I guess it's there. With the switch, uh, oh, there's like this pointing arrow sign. So we have like a medium health pack here, which is kind of a, like a lunch box. Uh, we have been here already, night show. Yeah, we have been here already. Uh, let's go over here on this alley, another fish shop, and more pickups, uh, more of the same, more of the same, more of the same, more shutter doors, garage door, ah, Rocket Noodle also sells down here, <laughs> cool, medium ammo pack, uh, something that I don't know what it is, because I don't know Chinese, Mandarin, uh, oh, optician, okay, that one helps us, so there's an optician over there. Uh, what else? Yeah, you can, we can climb this set of stairs. So here it's similar to the other side, right? Since the map is symmetrical, but now we're on the blue side. Also, petition again. Uh, let's just take a little bit of a closer look here on this part. You are at this since the capture zone. There is this roof and this whole like architecture, architectural part here. Part. Uh, oh, this one is a night bar. Okay, cool. Uh, what else? Also, there is like we're gonna talk about that for color, but we can see like there is some sort. Of, there is a lot of blue billboards and signs on this side, and on the other one there are red billboards and stuff like that, right? And even the details of the buildings, like this one is painted blue, many parts on the other side. Uh, they're mostly white, but there's like some brown or red details like this one and yeah over here brown 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 so what else uh, lunchbox 
some beer cans. Uh, let's buy. There's a sink here. I don't know if I went over here on the red side. Red side. Uh, maybe. Oh, there is a guillotine here from this spot. Uh, this map was probably launched with on the same update. If you I were to guess. I have already been here, there's the bridge thing, the door, there's like this corridor I guess, you see a bunch of stuff that we have already seen and described, like with the platform I guess, uh, what else, this is probably a new stand right, public notice closed, ok good to know, and is there anything else, another silk lantern, is there anything else to describe here, we have already been here right, down here, yeah, uh, the more, more signs and shops that I don't know <laughs> what that they are selling. And, and here on the blue side, let's just look for anything different. Okay, so I don't, I'm not sure if the, there, there was a building like this on the red side, so maybe the architecture here changes us slightly, beside just the color. But the rest is mostly the same, except for the colors, right, and stuff. Oh, well, I guess details on the on the there's a bus here, but with different details. Fu forty two HC and stuff like that. Night bar optician and uh, what else? I think that's it. Resupply, resupply. Now the only thing left is to check inside the looting spawn. So. I think I'd rather do it like this this time. And so I just pass through and then zero. Okay. So here on the blue thing spawn, things are mostly the same, right? Again, upper locker, I guess the clothes are in blue. Again, we're gonna talk about that on the also this thing. We're gonna talk about that on the Wow. On the analysis, but still. And here I guess the there is like this chair and this the briefcase are blue stuff are blue this is that's it right so that's it for the description a bunch of stuff bunch of chop shops like uh, oops no clip bunch of chop shops buildings uh, two buses there is the streets bunch of alleys all around silk lanterns, the structure in the middle on the capture zone, on the capture point, so yeah. Let's move on to the analysis then. Also I guess didn't mention but some benches. <laughs> but anyway, uh, for the analysis I'm gonna be considering 8 elements of art, which will be points, lines, shapes, forms, space, texture, color and value. Uh, so let's begin with points. Let's see here, do we see points somewhere? Do we see points like, uh, there's, there's kind of some here, which are, I'm definitely talking about this for textures also, because easily this is also a texture, but this, they're like black and on the small, but black, oh yeah, it's a point, so it, it must be small, otherwise it would be a shape. So black ones on the wall, other than that, uh, any other one notes again, like these ones. Let's see if here we can find anything like that. This we could maybe call these points uh, again black ones in some sort of pattern on the scale. Uh, what else, what else, what else, what else, what else, uh, is that it basically, um, a kind of some uh, white or grey ones on the ground, again, I think easily that's gonna be a texture later also, but not much much to talk about, any, uh, any more interesting perhaps point, let's say, um, that's not just like, <laughs> part of a texture for the ground or the walls. Let's see here, uh, is there anything on the bus? Also this is a two level bus, right? Uh, 
quick for going to the main point. Uh, we could maybe say there are some points here, but maybe they're big enough to be called like shapes. <coughs> uh, my bad. Okay, moving on. Uh, let's see, but not sure if we're gonna find any more. I guess, ah, I guess I have kind of some white ones here, maybe. Um, the capture zone again. <laughs> we're gonna talk about this for texture later on, also. Then again, there's ones on like this kind of point, black points on the ground. Uh, if it's like the same texture, I'm gonna refrain from repeating myself. And yeah, I think that's gonna be mostly it. I don't know now. Oh yeah, let's let's just go on with this then, I guess. Uh, again, this probably is better. This this is I think not a point, rather shape. Um, so yeah, if we move on, let's move on to the element of lines. So probably the easiest ones to talk about are gonna be these ones. Although again, should we look at it as lines or shapes? Ah, whatever. Uh, I'm gonna say they're very, they're thick lines. And maybe also look at them as shapes. For lines, there are like a lot. There's a lot of curvature to them, and. Uh, Edges and discontinuity, you know, classic stuff for Chinese characters, Mandarin. Either they are in black or in white, depends on the viewboard, right? Uh, and when do you change the language, when do they say night bar or blue, naturally there is changes in that. There is more continuity on the lines, although the thickness still remain kind of constant, roughly. And... Uh, what else? Uh, curvature. And for curvature... I didn't mention there was a lot of curvature, but there's also a lot of straightness, you know, depending on the character. Yeah, that's a lot of variety in, in either case. I think it's not that easy to describe with just curvature. And some degree of edges as well. Although not... There seems to be more than like 90 degree edges. Depends on the character again, but okay, yeah, kind of hard to to say there's a predominance of anything of any of those here. Uh, so okay, what else for lines? I have stuff like this. Again, we're gonna, gonna definitely talk about this for texture and maybe form, uh, but a bunch of straight lines. Regular, very, very regular in thickness, and um, what was it? A number of edges, right? Again, 90 degree edges, no curvature, I already said, straightness, thickness. Ah, in color, and they are like grayish, black or grayish, right? What else? Ah, and also in thickness, the thickness is regular, and also, I don't know, like. Middle ground is not that thin. It's like the horizontal ones are a bit thicker. The the vertical ones, now they are maybe all moderately thick, and it's just the color that changes. Also here we can talk about again. I'm gonna talk about this for texture, but again, uh, just a bunch of straight lines, 90 degree angles, somewhat regular thickness. Although this one changes more, right? And. Uh, Changes a lot of the thickness, I guess. And they're like thinner parts, thicker parts. And they're in general black. Or maybe there are some grayish ones. Shades. Shades of gray and black. And the other lines. Ah, okay, so there's this, I guess. Yellow ones, straight, uh, regular thickness, so on and so forth. And very thick ones this time. Uh, also here, same stuff. There's there are like the lines like this on the ground, and here, ah, I suppose the lines that are on the accompanying the layout of the road are not always straight. 
Although, although there's still a lot of straightness to it, but yeah, but they are not always straight. There's some amount of curvature and some edges. Anything else for lines? Uh, here maybe? Kind I guess. Again, in fact, from texture. But uh, more of the same. This time, like, uh, irregular, very irregular in thickness, gray. A lot of straightness to it. A lot of straight lines on the map. Again, straightness, regular thickness. What else? Uh, I don't know man. Uh, in here they don't think there are lines. I don't think so. They're just uh, visual. I think this time there are none. And it's just like shadows and stuff. I don't know. Uh, let's see, any other lines here for us to look? Because uh, in Fortress Show, as I always say, has this aesthetic that in many 3D models they don't use lines. You know, like this, uh, there could be a black line separating through the two facets, but there is nothing like that. Nothing <laughs> pronunciation. So what else? More straight lines with regular thickness here and uh, 90 degree angles. And uh, what else? No regular. Eh, okay, regular. We have seen a number of lines with ir irregular thickness. This time they have regular thickness, and they are again moderate. Anything else? Uh, I think that's it for lines. More of that again here. A lot of user lines here on Konking. Konking, I just realized. Here, I think there are none here. I think this is just texture. Uh, what else? Here again, this time do they have regular thickness, but they're a bunch of straight black or gray lines, and um, yeah, but vari with variety in their thickness, some are thinner, some are thicker, yeah. Uh, okay, let's move on, I think. Even if we're missing some lines somewhere, I think we have talked about a lot of them. Now we move on to shapes. Shapes, which by the way, shapes are two dimensional, forms are always three dimensional. So that's the main difference you, you, we're going to be looking for here. So for shapes, we're gonna have stuff like ah, this being a three dimensional space and stuff, different angles are gonna give different shapes. For example, here, the lock, the white locker gives off a rectangle, just the locker. And uh, but on this angle, it becomes a, an hexagon because it's like one, two. Three, four, five, six. So or something like that. Classic stuff for this kind of thing. This box gonna have something similar. One, two, three, four, five, six hexagon for this angle. Then this one rectangle. What else? Uh, in this, in the office room, there is a number of unique shapes. Like the telephone has unique shapes. The chairs have some amount of curvature to them, I suppose. But then the rest is kind of hard to see. These pipes have some very long and thin shapes to them. Locker again, something rectangular or hexagonal mostly, with many unique ones for the details inside. Many minute shapes. What else? Uh, again, something a lot of for the crates, something hexagonal-ish or squarish again, and the rest uh, something close to that, even though it gets, it's got gets harder. This case has something unique, but thin and long again. What else? The bus has... I don't think it's good enough to just call it hexagonal or rectangular again, because there is a lot of smoothness to it, although it is kind of a concentrated uh, shape, let's say, nothing protruding or stretching from it, but still. Uh, what else? of red tangles for the steps, I guess. Ah, this structure here is interesting because it has all these like thin long parts to it and then there's like all these arcs, curved arcs on the top part. Uh, what else? Oops. More here the pipes again with something not that long and a bit thicker this time but still for shapes considerably 
long and thick, and this time with a uh, curved thread, comparison to the other pipes. So there's like the many walls and bars and shutters and stuff. I'm just gonna say most of them have like a lot of 90 degree angles. All the shapes also I mentioned it for it for lines, and that also goes for like square shapes and uh, this one, this kind of layered uh, appearance, you know. What else for shapes? Red dimension here. I guess we could talk about the buildings also, which all have this again hexagonal or rectangular shapes to them, very tall ones with many details, but the details are all again mostly rectangular, squarish, and hexagonal depending on the angle that you look at. This box, for example, one, two, three, four, five, six, hexagon there. Although it has this underside part, which skews things up a bit, but anyway. What else? Uh, ah, if we're gonna if we're gonna consider the characters as shapes, we could, we could say that they are like uh, pretty thin shapes and intricate with many details on them. I guess it's good enough to analyze also them as shapes and lengths. I don't know. That's what I have been doing with points and textures, so might as well, I guess. Uh, what else? We could. Ah, right. this again, rectangular, hexagonal. You could try to be ha get a broader look and try to look at the shapes of the map, but that's probably gonna be easier to talk about and look at when we talk about the element of space because of the angles that we have, and I try to respect the author's presentation. Here we kind of have like this triangular shape, but we don't see the whole picture, right? Because we don't see the other routes, and uh, we kind of have to go inside to keep looking at the rest of the path here. Another one, I guess. Uh, when talking about the element of space, I think it's gonna encapsulate it better. Uh, so I don't won't bother talking too much about that. What else? Ah, well, I guess the <laughs> guillotine has its unique shape of. Uh, What's the name of this? It's not a knife in English. Uh, in Portuguese it would be cutelo. I don't know, whatever. Butcher's knife, I guess. Butcher's knife. Anyway, uh, let's talk about the capture zone because it has some unique shapes. It has this very wide and uh, curvy top to it in shapes. Also, ah, I guess all the silk Chinese lanterns have their pretty iconic roundness to them. Although some are more oblong, but uh, yeah, I forgot to talk about that iconic shapes there and then uh, like these parts are thin and go up um, triangular on some angles and rectangular on the other and uh, I'm not sure if, pre if uh, trapezoidal on some angles depending on the where it is in the rotational cycle or uh, circular or oval for the control point depending on the angle or uh, anything else for shapes again this is for the pickup um, Rectangular or hexagonal, and for the bottle, kind of a bottle shape, you know, with a thicker base and then stretches at the at the end of it. Sorry, stretches now uh, gets thinner at the end of it. Where there's the cap. But what else? I think I, that's a good enough analysis of shapes. A lot of square and uh, rectangular, hexagonal shapes, right? Then there is the unique cap, the, the unique one on the capture zone with some other ones. I already mentioned the buildings. We could say the plants have. I didn't I mention like the base of it, where the plants are planted, right? But I didn't mention the plants themselves. They have like this very. I'm not sure if I should say serrated shapes to them, but they're very intricate with a lot of small details and small parts to them these kind of shapes here. Uh, I think that's gonna be it in general. Uh, oops, can I go down? Uh, in general, yeah, it's interesting to see that uh, in this map I didn't see that much trapezoidal shapes, that's usually pretty common for Team for Fisher maps. But this one with the buildings, it, it seems to be an exception. Although like on, on buildings like this one, uh, we, I guess we could say it's a trapezoidal shape when there is like this sort of edge. Usually there is this edge on the roof of a building, you know, 
Haunting Fortress maps, but buildings like and so yeah, some buildings also have this trapezoidal shape. Good thing I came to the blue side to check. And yeah, I guess rectangles and the triangles there also. Why not? Uh, I think I think that's good enough for shapes. Let's move on to farms, which is about 3D. So first things first, a lot of flatness all around. The buildings all have like flat walls and stuff. The ground is flat and stuff like that. But other than that, a bunch of cubes and blocks from the many crates and crates and boxes. Uh, we have like something more curvy for the trash trash bags. Uh, what else? Let's do something flat for this wooden platform and more cubic stuff. The buzz, again, it's not sure it's easy to just to say it's a block because there is a fair degree of smoothness to it. Also, if, you, if you're talking about farms, it's even easier to see the tires now, I guess. And so, but again, I, I much like our shapes. I think we can say it's a concentrated uh, convex, I think, farm with nothing protruding from it, you know, no stretching for it, stuff like that. Uh, what else for farms? Uh, thin long ones for the <laughs> like posts, like like posts, I guess. So it's also similarly for the pipes, some sort of very thin long uh, cylinder-like farm here, tube-like farm. What else? Uh, we have this nice, you know, the, the farms for the steps, which are pretty. There's a lot of straightness to them, like flat side, flat side, flat side in 90 degree angles. So, so far, also some amount of flatness on the rails and for this. Again, unique farms for this part here, as I said before, with the curved, arc, curved arcs. I think all arcs are curved, right? Well, with the arcs. <laughs> what else? Um, what else? I guess the sink has its unique. I didn't talk about the shape of it, but it has its unique farms with a, a very concave farm right with this hole in, in, inside of it, and also details like the faucet and whatnot. Pretty unique in farms. What else? And here again, a lot of flatness once again, although we see, do see a lot of details, right? So there are a lot of stuff that's protruding from the walls and stuff, so it's not perfectly flat. The balconies, for example, are like parts that are protruding from the flatness of the buildings, so, and there is a lot of those details and stuff like that. For this part of the plants, again, it's a fair degree of blockiness to it for the farms. And the plants themselves have kind of a very flat and cheap farms to them, right? It's like uh, there's not much meat in there, let's say. <laughs> uh, what else? The capture zone, again, very unique in farms. This time it looks kind of a very short and uh, curved pyramid, something like that, with its unique, uh, very unique architecture, like for example this part here, that's protruding. Uh, again, the, there is the Chinese silk lanterns, which uh, give off either spherical forms or more like, what would be the 3D equivalent of an oblong? Egg forms, maybe. Stuff like that. The hologram, the hologram has a prismatic form for of that I'm sure. The the control point itself has like it's like this circular roundish plate disc on the ground. But I was in here again a lot of flatness as I mentioned before and other stuff that I already mentioned. The signs naturally are flat also. Uh, Was I on the blue side? Yeah, I think I started on the blue side this time, right? So, if I go on the red... Uh, more of the same, more of the same, any difference, any difference... Ah, let's check inside this one. So, again, concave farms for the open lockers and the block cube for the white one. Even the open locker has some block in the streets, right? But still. Flatness for also the shelves, I suppose, right? Is this a oh, oh no, this is a roof, sorry. Uh, so that shelf has some degree of flatness. Oh, there's this detail here. Interesting. Um, what else? Tubes. 
and uh, for this office room, a lot of unique farms like uh, blocks again. There's the telephone, the chairs here, very uniqueness, unique farm. Should then with curvature again, and yeah, a degree of flat, uh, there's flatness on the walls, stuff like that. Very thin farms for this object here. I'm thinking uh, that's it. I'm thinking that's it. Very cool. This is gonna be a very interesting texture later. Uh, I think that's it for farms in general. You know, a lot of blocks, a lot of a lot of flatness. The unique one in the middle, curvature, something oval, oval or. Spherical for the lanterns, there's the buses. Let's talk about the element of uh, space now. So, and not begin this one. You gotta be careful with the element of space, not to mix it up with shapes and stuff. At least, I think it makes more sense to talk about uh, the element of space with different uh, words, let's say, different terms. For example, I like to say that our space like this is like visually abundant, very easy to see where everything is, and stuff like that. This one is a bit tighter, although it's still relatively visually abundant. Something of a tight space would be like this gaps between these objects, so that's like a tight use of space there. This one so far. So. Here it's even more abundant, I would call this an open area, open use of space, and there's a lot of that, but we still see tight use of space, for example, the space between the wall and the trash bags uh, stuff like this, again, tight between the small objects, classic thing for fish and stuff what else, uh, again, the more, some parts are tighter, but still in general it's very somewhat of an open space the night sky is vast, I suppose, although it's way, way harder to look at it for with this author's presentation a box, I guess. Uh, da -da -da -da, many tightness on the tails, and again, again, uh, again, open space here. So so far, there is like a lot of like tighter spaces, uh, more more or less tight spaces. So. But I don't know if it makes sense for me to just list every one of them. I'm trying to broad, broad, stroke, it, broad stroke it, saying, oh, in the open space it's more expensive or more open, and inside the buildings it's like visually generous still, and stuff like here is like tight tubes of space. That's basically an approximation, perhaps, let's say. Uh, and the sky is pretty expensive. <laughs> okay, fair enough, here is easier for us to see the sky, because there is no buildings in the middle here. So in the, mid, in the middle part of the map we can look up and realize how expensive the use of space is there. And if we're gonna use this simplification of mine, I think that's basically it. At most we could like ask the question, what about here, which we are like somewhat underground? Is this a... Uh, how much of a use of space is this? Uh, I would still call this an open space. Also visually generous, but if we're gonna like place this in categories, that's how I would say it. And here, like, yeah, it's kind of tough. In here, I would call it visually abundant. In here, more more open space. I'm basically looking at the, it's kind of the area, you know, how much space is there <laughs> naturally. And I think that's good enough of an analysis, you know, without uh, getting to, to well, without measuring. St Every single corner, crevice, stuff like that. Just uh, an over, uh, broad overview of things. If that's the case, let's finally talk about the element of texture, because now things get interesting. Now, because there's a lot of them, we can talk about this like damaged and dirty texture on the ground alongside uh, some kind of splattered texture for what paint on some parts of it. Again, on the wall here we see, again, somewhat some damage texture, for example here, which I will talk about for points later, and also some parts like some sort of scraped paint uh, texture, kind of, 
In here we see a little bit of a wood texture, although not that, not that detailed. So we ought to find a better, a more detailed examples later on. What else? Uh, ah, here again, faded paint, kind of for the texture. Texture, by the way, is the appearance of the surface of something. Uh, what else? I already mentioned scraped off paint. Ah, here we see some out of a rusty texture on the fuse box, very interesting. And also on these pipes. Uh, what else? What else? What else? What else? What else? What else? I mentioned this before. So here we have this pattern texture, which is visually, visually like patterned. And also, naturally, it's what we use for blind people to help themselves, right? <laughs> In real life. When we build stuff. Uh, what else for textures? Again, there's like imperfections on the paint here. So, again, scraped off, faded off paint. Uh, and more of this like eroded texture or splattered paint there. Pretty comforting for the shoe. On the buzz, anything for textures? Uh, Kind of another pattern texture here, I get, think you, you can say. And uh, nothing on the tires, roughly. Maybe a little bit of a lustrous texture on parts of the tire, you know, the metal part. What else? Uh, I hear again another pattern texture, but again with uh, signs of erosion and some on some parts like splattered paint. Let's try to find something different. What about this sewer entrance here? Again, a pattern texture, I guess. And again, uh, is it eroded this time? I think I see a little bit of rustiness to it. And I don't know, maybe some a bit dirty, some texture, dirty, dirty texture there. Ah, this here. This has specifically like some sort of damaged fracture texture, and also reminds me it resembles cement. You know, between the blocks, so that's the word of texture there communicating that. More of the same here. Uh, again, I... maybe this would be better. Be... Maybe this is more light rather than, than texture on the billboards actually. What else over here? Again, a bit of paint, I guess. Anything different, anything different, more the same, faded off paint, eroded, damaged, faded off, damaged, uh, on the earth maybe, on the earth, some sort of rough and dirty texture there, where there are the, plant, there are the plants, for the plants themselves I don't think there is any texture, just color in it, okay, uh, what else, again, rusty texture, this time on these white pipes, pretty notable. Uh, on the structure here, uh, I think this is a, a pattern texture again. Splattered paint, uh, wind texture, what else? Ah, on the control point there we have this sort of holographic texture to this part of it, the way it reflects light in this kind of a... Uh, Computer made way, let's say. <laughs> what else for the and for the point itself? Um, and again, faded off texture and uh, a little bit of a dirty one, I think, on the metal plates and the area around uh, again naturally. And I don't know if there is anything else here for texture that I haven't described already. I'm just gonna take a quick glimpse. I think on the control points there ought to be something. Let's see. Uh, sorry, on this palm, not the control points. And here we have described, analyzed this already. The control point, more eroded texture, damaged, splattered paint, rusty on this water pipe thing. Uh, sorry, water drain. What else? On the white locker, there is not much on the bucket, more of the same. On the scale, I I think there isn't much work there. Again, a slight wooden texture on the bench. Uh, ah, and here, the, and here we can see a little bit better the example of a wooden texture on the open locker. It's like you can see the kind of veins of the wood, you know. 
Uh, what else? The rest I think is more of the same. You know, scrape it off, damage, stuff like that. The only exception maybe is on the office. Can we find anything different there? Um, maybe some lots of plastic texture on the telephone, I don't know. And what else? Uh, I have like some textures on the paper there, some layer texture kind of. And the ground has its pattern texture. What else? The chair I don't have much. I think that's it for texture. So a lot of different ones. That's it for texture. Let's go for... Um, Line shapes, forms, space, tech. color, color. Let's go for color now. So here we have like a lot of shades of white and maybe gray on the ground. Here is more of a gray. Perhaps these are shades of. This is a darker shade of white. I don't know. Closer to the gray. Uh, again, white on the, the pipes. And in the office, there is a lot of a very specific shade of red. There is brown and white again. The telephone is black, I guess. There are many details with new colors, but I'm not gonna focus too much on them. When we get out, oh, there is a lot of red again, as I said before, as you already know. And also, again, a lot of white for the buildings and shades of gray for the ground. And there is a lot of brown also on the buildings for many parts, right? There is red on the many uh, signs and the neon and stuff, but many parts of the building, no, this one not so much, there are parts of the building brown, or a dark red like over here, ah, this would be another good example of a trapezoidal shape by the way, uh, what else, the lines are yellow I guess, this part there are many details in yellow on the ground, and the ground itself it's, I think better described as a shape of, shade of black instead of grey this time, so white, grey, black, easy stuff, Brown and red, a lot of it. Details in many parts, in details in yellow. In the middle of the map, we see some very like fainted uh, green for the plants. Kind of. Uh, what's the opposite of sat saturated? Ah, <laughs> mix it up. Diluted, diluted. Kind of a diluted green here. Uh, what else? More white, uh, many details and stuff. Nothing too interesting here, I guess. Uh, and over there, as I said, the blue, shades of blue. This one has a darker blue, this one has a lighter blue, and so on. But also white, right? Not just blue. Here is like white with red and brown. Over there is a lot of blue, white with blues, with darker blues, lighter blues. And I guess this sign here is a shade of orange, I guess. Orange, orangey yellow, maybe. Uh, what else? In here, this bus looks a bit teal to me, but probably this is just a specific shade of blue, rather. Uh, more of what I already mentioned. Ah, in here, a different shade of green than the plants. This one is not as diluted to me, although maybe still a bit, but whatever. Uh, anything else? I already mentioned the blue. There, there is some. Uh, I think this is a shade of brown here also, on this part, but I guess only there, the rest is what we have analyzed already, I would say, I just want to look down here, but I don't remember anything different, I guess this one is in dark, a dark shade of blue, um, we have this part I guess, what, what color is this, not sure if a beige, somewhat of a beige maybe, uh, and that should be mostly it. Ah, and I guess the hologram is yellow, the metal plate is in grey. And this part here on the ground, lots of, lots of shades of grey th throughout on the ground. Much like before, on these parts that are not on the black of the road. So yeah, uh, that's it on the analysis for color. Uh, well, let's now make an analysis on... Value, value, which is about lightness and bright, light, <laughs> light, light, enlightened parts, bright parts, dark parts, shady parts, you know, light and darkness. So, for example, here on the control point, there is like the sources of light, then 
and they make this part brighter and on the corners are a bit, it's a bit shadier although in here even on the shadier parts you can you can still can make out very well the textures on the ground so my wood shades here which is common for Team Fortress shoe but uh, not always the case and here things get interesting because we have red lights right so um, uh, applying color to value very interesting uh, don't let me don't let someone who knows color theory hear me speaking right now. <laughs> but anyway, uh, what else? And a lot of shady parts and, and parts with this mild illumination. On the lights themselves, it's flash very intense, but on the ground in general, it's mild, both mild shadows and and uh, lights. I guess it's customary for the photo maps. Let's see if we can find uh, some parts which is like way dark pitch black because there is something like that on some maps and so let's see if this is one of those examples include uh, Cough Badlands and uh, Payload Race... what was it? Uh, Nightfall, second stage in the cave, look for it if you're curious what else? Uh, here it's like it's pretty clear to see things here, but basically it's because of the choice of white for the walls. It's still for value, the landers themselves are the most bright, flashy things here. The, the rest is just uh, well illuminated, let's say, bright, but not intensely. Not in, nothing too flashy. And I guess that's it. Um, over here, nope, still mild shadows. And also, I ought to talk about the placement of the lights and shadows, and um, yeah, more of the same. As always, I see like we see realism here of the shades trying to convey the the shape of the building, the thing that casts it, you know. Uh, also, it's usually what Infarfus should do. Does on its maps, it doesn't try to use the light and darkness in a crazy way. Uh, although on what was it, Cough Calder, I have seen some of that because the map is so dark and with on that map with like some pinpoint spots of brightness, that was a case where Team Fortress 2 did something a little bit different with uh, value. But in here it's mostly like whatever, you know. It doesn't seem, there doesn't seem to be something too iconic to it, to the use of light. It's just that. Uh, at most you could say, I guess, that we have some very bright rooms. But then again, a spa room, we could say, is one of those. So yeah. Ah, and it's night time, I guess. That's worth mentioning when it comes to value. So um, that means that the, sort, the light's coming mostly from artificial illumination. You know. Uh, but that's yeah. And I guess that's gonna be my analysis on value. Anything else that I would say? Uh, there is a small lamp here, I guess. Very unique uh, design here. Uh, it's kind of small and not so easy to see, but good, good design there. Uh, what else? Very unique uh, shapes, forms. Color, maybe not so much, but whatever. Shapes and forms are cool there. What else? I think so, yeah. If that's it for value, let's move on to the interpretation. Now we gotta interpret the vision behind the work. First things first, uh, let's start with the basics. Cough map 1442. Um, Again, I don't know of any backstory of this map coming from some other game, so I will interpret that it was created as a cough map for Team Fortress 2. You know, uh, <laughs> if you... That's, that's interesting for you to think about if you ever go on a custom server. Um, so, and then you can compare that kind of stuff, you know, depending on what you might find on a custom server somewhere. But anyway... Other than that, what else? For the interpretation, think of stuff like the name and uh, what we said for the description analysis, all the buildings, right? I think another is very reasonable idea for the interpretation is that this was supposed to resemble a 
uh, Chinese metropolis. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I would say a metropolis necessarily, but a uh, Chinese urban environment. You know, modern urban. Okay, okay, this is getting a mouthful. A Chinese modern modern city. Well, what about that? Sure, because there's neon everywhere. There's a lot of buildings, so that talks about the technology involved here. This is not a medium medieval mode map. Uh, what else? So yeah, and uh, naturally the the characters are in Chinese. I believe this is Chinese, so that's also helping with that interpretation. Uh, technically, we could say something like separate those that idea into more than one, two or more, like uh, ah something Chinese and a city. But I think. Uh, Uniting one idea and saying a Chinese city can be interesting because then we can think about the architecture of a Chinese modern city, namely stuff like the the silk lanterns and other and architecture and stuff like that. I think oh, there is something to gain in being more precise here. So a Chinese modern city, urban environment, whatever. Uh, okay, so those are those are pretty easy, I think, interpretations. Uh, there's a lot to help with that. Now, anything else? Uh, also, I could think about game design and stuff now. Think on the routes that are available in this map. is iconic for conking hmm. so there is a lot of like pathways and uh, corridors in here it's kind of crumpled up in space except the middle part the middle part is a bit more open I'm not sure if I would add that to the vision, the idea of a map which is more about uh, tight spaces. We did uh, have that idea for other maps, like uh, Pale Grace Nightfall. Uh, would I repeat it for this one? Mm, let's see... Cloth Map 1442, Modern Chinese City... Maybe, I think I will. And also because I think uh, it helps a bit, it works a little bit well together with the idea of a city. Because often cities are cramped up in space, it's harder to find open fields in a city, you know, maybe in a park, but the density of space in a city, is, depending on the city, can be very, very high, the, how dense it is, everything is. So, and I think that. I see a little bit of that. I'm gonna interpret that, that for the vision. That they wanted a map, uh, iconic, memorable for tight spaces and corridors and stuff like that. Visually, at least. Um, so, yeah. There's not much verticality, you know. You have what? You can, like, rocket jump on top of the bus and on top of this bridge thing. And on top of the uh, of the roof there, and that's it. And maybe on top of these stands, I guess. Uh, ah, no, okay. Now this part is also open, but there is also a ramp to it. You know, if you compare this to a map like uh, Thunder Mountain, for example, or High Tower, there is much more space and platforms for it to jump vertically. So uh, it's way more open. Those maps are more open, so comparison to this one, so yeah, I will, I will leave this for the interpretation, uh, tight spaces, routes, corridors, whatnot. So I have three ideas for the vision, that's like a good enough already, I would say, for, but uh, is there any other one that maybe we could add? I don't think this is a reference to King Kong. <laughs> uh, maybe on the name, just a joke. Kong King, King Kong. 
Um, as I interpret, it's more of a uh, idea of being resembled to Hong Kong. If, um, if we find anything that can resemble a monkey, perhaps we could talk about King Kong. I don't know. Uh, yeah, there were the, you could you could say, oh, is, since the name is Kong King, which is pretty similar to King Kong, is this a reference to the monkey King Kong? The way I interpret, they just wanted to make a joke, and it wasn't part of their vision for the map. It feels a little detached, the name and the map. Sometimes that happens. You can make uh, an interpretation for the vision behind the name and for the vision behind the art. Although the name should help the, your interpretation for the art. But uh, those are different things. Much like you can have, let's say... A... For example... Can I get a good example here? Uh... I also have a new item. What is it? Equalizer. Great. So let me see a map with a cool name here. Uh, Lazarus, Conking, Harvest, Brazil. So we're going for Brazil. I think this is a good enough example. When we play on Brazil, the map does not have any anything that uh, ties it strictly to Brazil. You know. There is that best, even the, the perhaps the most iconic thing you can think about is their Amazon rainforest. But Brazil, Brazil is not the only country in the world with that. So the way I interpret it, the, the idea of the name Brazil was to convey, yes, in part the the geography, the fauna, the flora, sorry, the, the flora of the place. But yeah, that's the thing, the idea is to convey it to be something that ties to the flora of the place, not necessarily to the country Brazil, you know? Because if we... I have already done the critic on Brazil, but if you are to make the interpretation that uh, Brazil should uh, communicate Brazilian because the name is Brazil, then and, you, know, you don't find any flags, you know, you're, gonna not, you're gonna, not, never gonna consider it successful. Because uh, that's because I think the names that's how I interpret the, the use of the name there. That uh, the map technically could be from some African country or something, that's not that strictly tied it to Brazil, usually. But the, the name helps convey the identity of the map regardless, through the idea of a tropical place, rainforest and whatnot. So anyway, I, that, I think that's enough for an interpretation. I'm uh, not sure I can think about anything else that would be a part of the vision for this map. As I interpret, uh, let's keep it simple. So, to recap, cough map for Team Fortress 2, uh, some, uh, some sort of Chinese modern city, urban environment, and some map with uh, tight, tight, spot, tight spots, corridor, tight places, stuff like that. So those will be the three ideas of the vision that we are going to be looking at I'm thinking on when we go to the judgment step right now. So for the judgment step, I'm going to be considering six principles of art, which will be movement, unity slash variety, contrast, emphasis, balance and proportion, those six. And uh, what else? So let's begin. Uh, I'm sorry, I was <laughs> my mind was going somewhere else. <laughs> Movement, which is not about animations, by the way, it's about how a work of art can move your eyes, guide your eyes in some path or direction. So for movement, uh, stuff like this, uh, li yellow lines, you know. Kind of move your eyes to go forward, depending on the angle, depending on the situation, especially like through this angle, kind of move you forward, you know? That's a way that the principle of movement, uh, an example of the principle of movement there. Stuff like the yellow lines accompanying the shapes of the road and the use of color, the black color of the road, especially when comparing to the gray on the sides. 
principle of contrast. <laughs> By the way, principles of art often help each other, influence each other, don't be surprised. But I also see the principle of movement through the use of lines, color and color here, and shapes I guess, with the shape of the road. Uh, what else for movement? Ah, here easily, like the this blue stripe here, also conveying movement to climb down. So here, through shapes and colors, especially uh, texture, uh, maybe a bit, maybe a little bit of texture to it. I think it's slightly more faded on the border, borders a bit. Okay. Uh, what else? Ah, even the staircase being the, the way the steps repeat through color, shape, color, shapes, and forms. Easily. What else for movement? Uh, whoosh, in here. The. This. What's the name of this? Not a handle. <laughs> uh, guard rail. This guard rail is also with their shapes and forms and color being, being continuous. I dimension the steps. Um, I think that's mostly it. So a lot of staircases, staircases, guard rails, the, the detail on the wall there, this yellow pedestrian lines, the yellow lines on the road. Ah, arrow signs also are an example. Not this one is moving, but if it can we find a static one? If there is an animation there, but it works even if it's just uh, static. I'm not sure we're gonna find because it's pretty. I think the idea of the map for there to be like this animated arrow sign. But um, if even if it was just like a picture instead of animated, would be convey movement. Uh, what else? Uh, I think that's in general it, and we ought to find the other examples if we look for it. But the ones that I see most easily are these ones. Ah, even stuff like this, uh, these drain, water drains, like being continuous and so long here, kind of give a little bit of the principal movement here also. So anyway, does any of that uh, tie somehow to? The idea of a cough map for Team Fortress 2! Don't think so? Um, staircases, guardrails, uh, stuff like that. Just check if there's anything inside the spawn here for movement. Uh, I don't think I see anything specifically for Team Fortress 2, let alone cough. Ah, I'm sorry, sorry, yeah, there is some. The arrows. <laughs> Because the arrows are all pointing to the control point, one way or another. Yeah. Uh, I guess these ones are not that easily noticeable to me, to compare to, in comparison to other maps. But yeah, uh, I'll do this arrow. Ah, okay, perfect. So this is an static, static arrow, like a picture, principal movement. Still. Kind of overrising the extent of it. But I don't think it needs to be every single arrow pointing to the control point, we have, because it's just the fact that we have like many of them. They, ah, also, this arrow is pointing to the control point. Uh, this one isn't. <laughs> and there is on red side. There is another one. So there are many of these animated arrows pointing to the control point. Uh, naturally, which is in the middle of the map because it's a cough map. The idea of a control point that you capture is a Team Fortress 2 mechanic. Uh, yeah, there's this arrow that tells you to go left. This arrow is a bit of a weird one, but uh, other than that, I guess it tells you to go pick up the trash or something, whatever. But yeah, so that's helping convey that this is a cough map for Team Fortress 2. What about the idea of a Chinese... Um, Modern city. Mm, so there are a number of staircases and guardrails in cities. It's uh, especially after the Industrial Revolution when we learn how to use metal and do it like this. Because I think this design uh, 
not, this is not a very complicated design. Maybe there were guardrails like this before the Industrial Revolution, so I don't know. And obviously staircases there were also. Uh, but other than that, uh, well, I did mention the the water drain and uh, basic plumbing came later in our history. We had Roman aqueducts, but I don't know when we started to we used the sewers in cities. Uh, in any case, uh, can we find a more solid example, perhaps? Uh, for, for movement here. Mm, I don't know. You know what? I'm gonna say that the arrows are helping again because they are like animated in neon, <laughs> which is something pretty modern. The not sure when exactly the technology to use neon lights was developed. If this is neon, I'm guessing it is. Uh, and make this sort of signs to use uh, electrical circuits. And, uh, maybe this is an electronic one even, but yeah. But I believe that technology came way later, right? With, uh, so, and there have been arrow signs this printed on this neon light to support things. I think easily conveys Easily helps convey that this is a modern city, you know. Uh, and again, the guard rays and the stairs aren't are helping some, I guess. But uh, I'm gonna say that just the neon is the strongest idea here, strongest aspect helping. Uh, ah, although it ties more to a city, nothing, not necessarily into something Chinese, right? So it, it if especially if we would kind of split that idea into two ones. Uh, we still would be missing like Chinese elements through the piece of movement, but that's okay. Uh, I wonder if we should, should split the idea now. No, no, let's okay. Now let's just keep going. Uh, okay, so this is just okay. So the conclusion is this helps communicate this is a modern city. I guess the real thing is is neon being used more in Chinese cities is like common, typical of that culture. That's we can ask that question. I have no clue. <laughs> think not necessarily? No, I think not. So yeah, okay, so it's helping convey it to a city, but not necessarily a Chinese city, so let's say it's not helping with that part of the visual. Uh, although it's very close, right? <laughs> ah, okay, yeah, maybe, okay, maybe I'm gonna, maybe I should have split those ideas, but whatever, let's just keep going. Uh, conclusion, so we just gotta say, is it helping convey that idea of the vision or not? Uh, yeah, in parts. Okay, let's just say this. It's helping convey that it's a city, so we still need uh, to find uh, to find a way that conveys it's a Chinese modern city. Okay, okay, maybe we can do that. It's another way to look at it. I have been doing this for I don't know how many months now and or even years if you count uh, reviews and I still get this doubt sometimes uh, in any case let's just move on enough of this uh, what about the idea of ah something of tight spaces and uh, of corridors and stuff like that so, okay, we have stuff like this, so this staircase and guard rail and the arrow point you to this tighter space routing and also it makes you exit into stair some set of stairs, which all of that help. Also, inside this tight uh, space, we have this staircase here, and to get out of the tight space, we have to take a staircase. So this would be an exception, because here we are in this open part, and there is this set of stairs here also. Also here... Uh, but I, to me it seems that they are pretty strongly tied, the staircases and the tight spaces. Not always, for example, we have like this tight space... Oh no, even if this tight space has a set of stairs, okay, cool. But yeah, not always, still, because in the middle of the map there's this open space with stairs. And here is some... They're not that much. This is tightish, right? It's still uh, like in the open part of the map, but it's more of a tighter part of it. Uh, ah, and perhaps this would be the exception. Yeah, this is another another exception against there's the middle of the map, and this is another set of stars more in the open. 
I don't think exclusivity is necessary, it would be nice, but I don't think exclusivity is necessary. Ah, also here, hmm, yeah, okay, well, this part here is also, hmm, well, but then again, this star is a bit more, the star itself is somewhat tight, right, compared to this set, which is, this is a, there is a lot of room around to move through the, the stars. I think this one is a bit more open also, uh, roughly, I don't know. Okay, I will say that's helping with that part of the vision because not only there are a lot of these tight spaces and corridors which you get in or get out of using stairs, principal movement, uh, but also even when that's not the case, on many of those cases, for example, this one is kind of tightish, you know. For the, considering the game design, I, I would ca I call this like uh, an open space, and maybe I, at best I'd call this visually abundant. But for the game it plays, I would, I would call this somewhat of a tight space. Again, visually tight is what, this is what I would call a very tight space for the element of art, but you know, hope you understand my meaning here. And... Uh, yeah. So, I will say that there is a lot of staircases tied to tightness in open spaces in general. So... I'll say that's also how with the creative vision. Uh, okay. So let's move on now to the principle of unity. For unity uh, slash variety, unity is all about how different parts of the art can apparently work together in one way or another. So, like. Uh, for example, many ways to accomplish it. Proximity, continuity, repetition. Yeah, the this rep, the repetition, this kind of patterns of yellow lines or shapes or whatever, repeating in color, shape, even texture. All that help uh, convey that they're kind of working together to make a path for you. Again, and also I also talked about this for movement, for movement right? Uh, what else? I also just realized I didn't talk about this for movement, but also the the lines on the street I think are also class something very easily tied to a, a modern city. Even though not not seen as necessarily Chinese, but anyway, um, we're talking about units now. So this is an example of the principle of unity. The repetition, continu the continuity of the color of black and the textures of the road itself are another way, of, another example of unity. We can talk about the repetition of the shapes and forms of the buildings, uh, hexagonal or rectangular shapes and uh, blocky forms with protrusions, how that repeats itself. That's our example of unity. Uh, repetition of the uh, signs in the Chinese characters, you know, stuff like that. And the example of variety, which is the opposite of unity. Is it's easier to think just about the name variety. So, for example, something unique in the map. So, the capture point is an example of variety. Uh, you can you can also understand it's 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 still the opposite of unity, you know. But there being like it's uh, unique things that do not repeat itself. That's not continuous with any other part of the map. It's kind of away from other stuff. All that help is it's an example of variety. The control point also, another example, if it's the hologram is only on the control point, this metal plate only there. So those are examples of unity and variety. So does any of that help convey this is a cough map for Team Fortress 2? Well, easily, right? First things first, I just mentioned how variety, there's variety on the control point. So because of the hologram, because of the metal plate, that's emanating light. Uh, it's like shapes, forms, color, texture. If you consider the question mark, maybe lines. Even. Uh, so, and not only that, there is, also, there is also repetition red on one part of the map, and repetition blue on the other. So all oh, that's important for stuff. Uh, okay. What about the idea of a Chinese modern city? Is that? Uh, is unity slash variety helping with that? Well, through a number of ways, yes, right? Unity slash variety is a great principle to help the author to achieve their vision. 
Uh, so, as I mentioned, repetition on the many signs with Chinese ideograms. The fact that they are on the signs also, which are... Are some of them on neon? Maybe. I think this one is not... There is... Is it... Uh, no, this one is maybe just painted, I don't know. This one is maybe on neon? I don't know. But yeah, like, these signs are pretty... Not only they are pretty about communicating something Chinese, because they are Chinese ideograms, but I do think they are also pretty iconic for a modern an urban environment. Stuff like this, even though it's definitely there's no neon or electricity here, also the designs of it is something that looks pretty post-industrial post -industrial to me. The sizes and shapes of the metal here, the way it was, it's so precise and fine-tuned, you know. Uh, oh, that I think helps a lot to convey this is a Chinese modern um, city. And for variety there is also the... As I mentioned, the, this, this part here, this roof thing, this specific architecture, I believe this is iconic as Chinese, I'm not sure if other countries have had the similar architecture to it in Asia or whatnot, uh, but this is, I think, helps convey the idea, and the silk lanterns are pretty iconic, there's both unity and repetition, right, uh, sorry, unity and variety, unity because there's a bunch of those lanterns, and variety because there is nothing with this kind of shape, roughly, in the map, these uh, oval shapes and forms, this, like, oval, uh, Oval farms or spherical farms. Also, also considering the layered texture to it, I didn't mention it before, but I'm mentioning it now. Mentioning it now. But yeah, uh, all that I think helps convey like uh, typical proper traits of uh, Chinese architecture and design and Chinese culture. Does I just uh, wouldn't say there's anything of a city here necessarily. Uh, oh, okay, okay, I guess this maybe does it. I just don't know how... I'm not sure if this is typical Chinese design here. It doesn't seem... I believe there are some European lanterns with a similar design from the past, so I'm not sure that's that iconic for Chinese... for something like that. But still. Anyway, yeah. Um, in any case, the, so yeah, there's this middle part, I think, helping convey aspects of Chinese architecture, design and culture. And the billboards are doing that, plus uh, something of a modern urban environment. And finally, what about the idea of tight spaces? That's for the player, you know, gameplay-wise, some sort of tight spaces, corridors and stuff like that. So for unity slash variety... Uh, I did mention that to me, like, whenever we are inside, I, I call this a visually abundant space, but not exactly an open space. I reserved the terminology of open to these parts where there is no roof above your head. Um, and so... The repetition, if we're gonna look at, the, at this like that, there is a repetition in it. And that, and some unity does, and does, I think that's helping convey the visual also. So through the element of space, and specifically how there are many of these tighter spaces, <laughs> as you, you should expect, I guess. There is still the open part in the middle of the map, and right after when we leave spawn. But I will, I will consider that there is enough repetition on this amount of tight spaces to make it iconic. And here, 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 there's like three different routes, although this one connects, right? This, this one connects. So there's like a two and a half different routes, which involve going through tight spaces. In here, it's we're still in the open, but uh, if you think about this part, you can say it's kind of tightish, maybe. That's what I'm thinking right now. And finally, here also, um, 
if, again, we are in uh, open part here, but not to the, but there's not that much wiggle room here still. So, yeah, I will say there's enough repetition to consider it uh, helping convey that part of the vision. Also, even that stuff, even though we're in the open, there's like the signs on top of us, so I think that helps a bit again with the idea of tight spaces. Uh, so yeah, that's it for the principle of unity slash variety. Uh, what about the principle of uh, contrast, which is about differences in the art, in different parts of the art, of the art, stuff like that. Um, so, like, what's the greatest source of contrast that I see here? Well, for one, the bus has some interesting contrast because uh, of how tools it is let's say there's like all this open space and flatness around and then there's this big chunk of stuff in the middle of the way with uh, this very noticeable ride in contrast with the black on the ground the gray on the sidewalks and the white on the buildings the other side there is blue and giving off that contrast also uh, I suppose we could also say like the shapes and forms of its details also have some contrast with this stuff around uh, but what else? Mostly like the farms of it. <laughs> How it's like a big thing in the middle of open, otherwise mostly flat sp space. The bus to me this is a strong source of contrast. What else? This bridge here, because of the arcs, as I mentioned before, very variety it tends to is a way to help with contrast and vice versa, I guess. Uh, like the color here being unique and. Uh, just the fact that this is like suspended, again the farms it's like it's connected on the wall, the rest is usually uh, flat ground, but they're, it's a bridge, you know, <laughs> being a bridge, uh, the unique architecture, the farms of it, I think uh, also give some contrast to the other parts, uh, and the arcs in these unique shapes, farms, and the color here, the, this, gray, this green, sorry, what else for contrast? Uh, blah, 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 blah. Also, the arch the, this building here, I did mention before, it's like something pyramidal, uh, like a very short and curvy pyramid for farms, and something, and also something unique for shapes, and that's like in the middle of all these buildings with like very tall, blocky farms and uh, hexagonal square shapes, so I think also another easy contrast here, very strong contrast between those two. I would say also the control point itself uh, being like having this holographic texture and yellow in color and gets blue and red later. Uh, but especially the texture I think helps contrast with the other stuff around. Very noticeable the textures. Also the the fact that it's floating, so lack of continuity contrast with everything. Everything else is like uh, connected in one way, you don't see anything floating. So uh, principle of unity I would say here, helping. Of that, I would say help with contrast. Uh, any other strong source of contrast? And there is like many smaller ones, you know. It could contrast uh, the diluted green with the brown of the of the plants here. There are smaller sources points of contrast, but let's let's keep things at that. And uh, okay. So does any of that that I said help convey the 1842 map? Well, yeah, easily, <laughs> right? Because not only I mentioned there's some contrast with the thing that floats with its unique, uh, also shapes and forms. Uh, color, you know, there's a lot of red and blue stuff around, but uh, the shapes and car co forms of it and the, co and the texture of that in contrast with the other stuff around with more solid textures and uh, more continuous, bigger, longer shapes and forms. That helps us look at the control point, the hologram helps through contrast with the other stuff. If there was like a bunch of holograms around it would be harder to notice it, but you know, uh, stuff like that. Also, you might be thinking red versus blue, in for sure, I just want a good, a good angle to answer that uh, point of view. Like. And a point like this point of the map, it can kind of work, right? Because we can see the red and the blue very close to each other, juxtaposed. 
But off tilting fortress through map is not always easy to see that through contrast. Because some, it's like the blue team it's, it has a spawn on one side of the map, the red team has on the other side. Kalkov maps are the easiest usually to see the red and blue contrast because their map is symmetrical and there is the control point, same distance for both teams, stuff like that. Payload maps, CP maps are a bit harder. Capture the flag maps, uh, I don't remember. From the top of my head, like, uh, yeah, they are a bit easier also. But yeah, uh, so contrast easily helping convey the rules of Team Fortress Shuru, the blue team fights the red team, and you gotta, gotta capture the control point in a cough game mode, so easily help with that. Uh, what about the idea of a Chinese modern city with contrast? Uh, I suppose there is some contrast with the, the forms, especially of the, the signs. Because they're all tie attached to this flat, uh, con concentrated buildings, let's say, con concentrated in farms. Because there's nothing, the, the yeah, like, there is nothing protruding from them except like this other stuff. No, okay, fair enough. Uh, there are some other some stuff that are not the signs that are protruding from the buildings, but I still think the signs have some pretty unique forms to them. So first things first, it's the fact that they are protruding from the otherwise flat buildings already helped to some amount of contrast. And also, and, if, and when comparing to other parts of the buildings that are protruding, uh, they still have pretty unique shapes and forms. So I think they, they have a contrast that makes it then easy to see. And uh, if you remember what I said on the unity slash variety principle, that helps convey that this is a Chinese modern city through that logic. Any other examples of it through contrast? Ah, I did mention contrast between the... Ah, this is cool. So there is like this architecture that again, I'm not sure if it's exclusive to a Chinese uh, culture, but I do believe it, 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 it has some traits of that, that architecture and culture. And it's in contrast with the very top building, so very elegant and cool and easy way to showcase like both the co uh, cultural as aspects, classic traditional architecture and uh, the silk lanterns also. There's that and there is in contrast with the very tall buildings, you know, and the, that were built with post-industrial technology, probably. So, and the contrast to that really, I think, helps me convey that it's a modern Chinese uh, place, city, very easily, very beautifully, I would say. Beautiful is subjective, beauty is subjective, but still. Uh, <laughs> I find this a very interesting way to help convey that idea, part of the vision, through this contrast. And uh, what about, finally, the idea of something, of tight spaces and stuff like that. Uh, that space corridors through contrast. Hmm. Through contrast, I'm not sure we're gonna find it. Anything like that. Uh, I did mention the bus, but the bus, even though it's pretty, pretty noticeable and iconic to me, it's still like in an open area. This is part's a bit tighter, but still. I don't think it's tight enough. Tight enough, especially because it's not even helping you directly get to the control point, you know. Uh, and then there is like all the corridors and routes and stuff, but I'm not sure I see too much contrast to it. Because the, especially because this idea of like levels, because basically you have like uh, this bottom level with uh, the staircases and the corridors, kind of. And then there is like the upper level with the with the open area, and that's the thing. Like uh, perhaps, yeah, perhaps you can do it if you look at very specific angles. But yeah, like something like this, we can see like down there there is like a tighter space thing, and up here a more open one. So this kind of angle gives some contrast to it. Yeah, I guess it's a way that I guess it's accomplishing that vision, especially because this point specifically the control point. 
So right here you can see very easily, if you're here capturing the point, you know, look at enemies over there and then trying to keep your guard up, you're gonna easily be looking both at the open, more open part and at the tighter part underneath. So another cool way that I see contrast, personally I think it's cool, uh, that I see contrast being conveyed here. Like... Uh, Sorry, the <laughs> tightness of space being conveyed here through contrast. Very cool. Very cool use of contrast for this map right now. <laughs> I, didn't, I wasn't expecting it when I was when I decided to <laughs> critique honking. Also, what time is it? Okay, we still have time. Um, but yeah, that's it for contrast. Let's talk about emphasis now. Principle of emphasis is all about there being some sort of focal point in the art that keeps your eyes there, stuff like that. Uh, anyways, I also like different ways to accomplish it. Uh, Fair enough, this control room, control room could have some emphasis to it if it wasn't so hidden, because <laughs> it has such unique uh, geometry, it's just such, such unique forms and shapes and objects. Everything's so unique there that it could be a point of emphasis, but it's hidden. Like, through here you can't see the good stuff, you know? <laughs> so... Yeah, not, not really the emphasis there. Which is by design, you know? I really believe that's pretty much uh, the point here. It's to say that there's something more in interesting, more complex going on behind all this fighting that we're doing. But whatever. For emphasis... Um, I would expect the locker to have some emphasis inside this power room, but it's kind of not that much. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Moving on, what else for emphasis? Let's see, emphasis, emphasis. Uh, usually contrast can help a lot. Can Usually a contrast is an easy way to help convey emphasis. And the buzz, it really has some contrast. Uh, maybe has, you could say there's some emphasis to it, but I'm not sure I would say that. Um, just because there's a lot going on, th this map is like loaded visually, there's a lot of visual information on everywhere you look, you know, because there's so much detail everywhere, so, and the buzz is full of details, so, um, not sure if that's, that's, I, again, I think that's helping with contrast, but I'm not sure it's helping to bring enough with emphasis, I think the amount of details muddle around with everything, everything else. And the farms, uh, again, it leave some emphasis there, especially through the farms, but still, I think there ought to be other points uh, of emphasis. Just like there's so much going on. Uh, and perhaps you were already expecting, but I guess the, there is emphasis on the middle part of the control point, the capture zone. But through a number of ways, first things first, I'm gonna say the symmetry of the map, because this is a map symmetrical and uh, you see a lot of things repeating themselves. But you see like this, this blue side, red side, and in the middle of it, there is the capture zone, I think that's helping. Other than that, there is the stuff that I said for variety and how it's uh, unique in and also contrast in comparison to the rest. That I think also helps bring emphasis to the middle here. Also, stuff that I said for contrast and variety for the control point itself, I think it's also helping bring emphasis to it. What else? Um, other than that... Yeah, I'm not sure I'm gonna find any other point of emphasis. Maybe the buzz again. But it's a bit weaker to me in emphasis than it was in contrast, the way I see it. Uh, I don't know. And the rest... Uh, yeah, the, and the rest is just like so visually detailed, so visually loaded that it's kind of hard to me to find the emphasis there. Uh, <laughs> like, there's some small one here, because on the, through this angle this is one of the things that ca kind of caught your attention. <laughs> so caution, do not enter, yeah, so I see that bring, bringing some emphasis. Uh, 
I just uh, realized like maybe the, the yellow lines bring some emphasis to them but I don't think it's strong enough because of how long they are and uh, there's still a lot of visual, visual clutter around so loaded visually but yeah, I don't know uh, I guess I'm gonna just save the capture zone and the rest is... and at the best, as I said, the, the, the bus Another way you can another way that to think about the principle of emphasis. Some authors do that is uh, consider it the same as hierarchy, and we can say like the if you do that, we can say that uh, I at least I think it makes sense. We can say that the the capture zone is like the highest in the visual hierarchy, and then the buzz is second to that, and then everything else. Uh, so yeah, okay. With that said, does any of that help convey the Zakov method in for uh, Obviously, because again, if we are focusing on the control point, if that's visually easy to see, notable, and uh, that's where, if there is emphasis, visual emphasis there, then uh, easily that's how, that's tied to the game mechanics. You have to, st if you st and the rules of the game, if you stand on the control point, uh, you start capturing it, and then if you. If that's after capture, if you hold it for three minutes, you win the game. So yeah, that's right. What about the idea of a modern Chinese city? Okay, this is interesting because I mentioned there's some emphasis on the on this very unique architecture with the, for example, short, uh, long, short, uh, curvy pyramid thing. Unique in that, all of that uh, I think helps bring some emphasis there. Mm, especially with help from contrast. And so, but then that help, helps communicate Chinese culture, right? And the buzz is something, especially com because we are considering if, uh, emphasis and higher, also like hierarchy when it comes to the principles of art. The buzz is also has some amount of emphasis to it, and it's something uh, notably modern. You know, you have stuff like the tires, the, the fact that it's an automobile, all of that uh, post-industrial, pretty, I believe modern is a good enough word for it. And so we're having both, points, both of these as points of emphasis, even though one is just conveying Chinese culture and the other is just conveying something more uh, of a contemporaneous technology. Uh, since we have both of these, on, I think the principle of emphasis is helping, emphasis slash hierarchy, whatever name you would prefer, I think it's helping convey the vision here, the idea of a Chinese uh, modern city. Pretty cool. <laughs> uh, what about the idea of a... What, what, ah, tight spaces and stuff. So for emphasis, uh, we have like the bus and uh, the house thing. Don't get me wrong, the house thing uh, is pretty close to the entrance to go down here, as I said before, but I'm not sure. Mm. When you are down here, the hologram is the thing that helps the most. I ah, know, also the architecture it helps bring emphasis to it. Uh, but does that help convey the idea of tight spaces and stuff like that? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I guess we can like compare it to other control points from other maps. If you compare it to, let's say, Brazil, which is like in the middle of the pl platform in, uh, in, the, in the air, or maybe um, Badlands, uh, or what else? Uh, what, what was it? Viaduct. Those have, I think, a uh, control point with more room to walk around. This one is a bit tighter. So much so that uh, <laughs> if you play this game, sometimes you're gonna see someone like hiding here, right? So yeah, okay. I, I, okay, I guess because of the design of this control point specifically, I guess it's also helping with this idea of a tight map of tight spaces and stuff. Um, yeah, Basically, like this, this wall here is pulling its weight, <laughs> pulling out the weight. This four set of walls. 
uh, making it a tighter and stuff like that. And also, and again, it also connects to the tighter spaces down there, but yeah. So, okay, that was it for emphasis. And what about now the principle of balance, which is all about uh, some sort of visual states of equilibrium or tension or lack of those things. So, tension, which one is better to, uh, whatever. Um, so, let's see if we can find anything like that here. Uh, stuff like this is like, uh, this is kind of tilted, you know, it's not perfectly aligned or anything, so variety in it, but it's still like stable, right? There doesn't seem to be anything tension, so stuff like this, I think hardly conveyed it. The rest is mostly in an equilibrium, let's see. Uh, so now we have like the signs. Uh, they mostly look, uh, again, in equilibrium to me. Not sure there is any one of them that uh, it's like looks like it's about to fall down or anything. This one is kind of like protruding a lot from the building, right? But it seems like a reasonably solid, both in the materials and uh, the engineering there, let's say. Oh, also, I hadn't realized it, but uh, we have uh, Chinese ideograms up there. I wonder if that says if that says red in Chinese. That would make sense, right? <laughs> I'm curious to see if there's something like that on the blue side. It, it's not true, right? Uh, yeah, there is also. Uh, I guess we can make the we can make an edu educated guess that it says blue and red on the other. Okay, but anyway, uh, anything what about this? Oof. This again, very like unique design, but not sure if. If it's communicate tension or lack of equilibrium somewhere, uh, really not sure. We can say that maybe slightly, right? It's not falling down, but it, maybe it's something that uh, it's easier to. It's like uh, less stable equilibrium, perhaps. Maybe we can say that visually, just because of how protruding it is. Yeah, at least that's what I think makes sense to me. Stuff that like the posts, uh, maybe that's a bit <laughs> too much. But yeah, what else? And the rest is in general, in equilibrium stuff, it's just all about design. Don't think I see tension anywhere, really. And the lack of equilibrium at best, like on, again on this very long protruding signs, maybe. Uh, I would say that. So no tension and equilibrium on the sign, on the long side, on the very protruding signs, because this is longer, but this, this still looks pretty stable. But like this other one, maybe it's going to fall down, you know? <laughs> yeah. At least okay. So does any of that help convey this is a cough map for Team Fortress Two? Don't think so. The only again, I don't see any tension where the structure pretty, looks pretty solid and uh, unique, but solid. The buildings are also everything solid. The buzz is uh, stable and solid, and so at the best, uh, ah, there is also the signs up there, but again, looks solid. So at the best, if these ideograms communicate something about the Fortress shoe, I would have to look at the meaning of them. If they do communicate something about Team Fortress Shure, if it says, like, spawn room, you know, then easily it's tied to Team Fortress Shure and mechanics and stuff, but, um, I don't know. Maybe they do, maybe they don't. I'm gonna, since I, and since I don't want to go, stop the stream to go research it right now and translate it, uh, I'm gonna say it's not helping because of my, of the knowledge that I do have right now. I just, you know. Let's not assume, basically, <laughs> and I have to say something, so let's say that's not helping, uh, even though I, 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 and I, I'm gonna say it's not helping, but I can be wrong, that's simply it, okay. Uh, what about, uh, my ignorance is gonna <laughs> be, I'm gonna put my ignorance on my critique, I guess. 
Uh, what about the idea of a modern Chinese city? Well, it's easy here, right? Uh, ah, the rocket noodle. Ooh! Oh, what do I know? <laughs> Actually, we found something that helps convey the idea of a thing for a fishing map. Uh, rocket noodle. So this sign is notably... Another one that's protruding a lot, right? Like that one, or that one maybe. Although this one has some extra... Extra parts helping stay in, helping stay in place. Um, but we have the rocket noodle sign, which is specifically the same symbol that of the soldier from T4 Pichu. So because of the rocket noodle sign, I guess it's helping convey that true balance, visual balance, that it's a map for T4 Pichu. Not a cough map, but still uh, because of the reference of the rocket, and especially because the symbol is exactly the same of the soldier on the soldier's shirt and stuff. Easily helping the vision there, this little joke. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and yeah, okay, and let's move on to where I was now. Uh, okay, then I'm not, I'm not gonna need to put my ignorance on my critique, I guess. <laughs> Whatever. Um, and uh, what was. Ah, Chinese city. And what about a modern Chinese city? Uh, so you probably know already what I'm going to say, but uh, the billboards in Chinese being this again, again that logic, right? Uh, being billboard, being signs in Chinese made with these post-industrial techniques, and I will guess. I think it helps convey that this is a modern Chinese city. And uh, because some of these billboards... And true balance this time because of how... <laughs> how protruding, how long these billboards are. And to me it looks like they kind of are not that hard to... To break and fall. If someone wanted to, for example, let's say. I wonder if... Uh, no, okay, figures. That's, ah, that's the important part of so we're just looking at this visually, because, uh, like, if I shoot at it, it stays in place and didn't... Ha nothing happened, right? But that's why we're just looking at visual balance here, not uh, actual balance and stuff like that. Because if we're gonna look at actual balance, uh, maybe this is just like cardboard and it's painted, you know? And uh, when it rain, and if you like uh, do this, the whole thing falls apart. You know that's why it's about visual balance here. Uh, so yeah. Anyway, we have this helping convey this modern Chinese city. And what about the idea of tight, uh, tight spaces, corridors, and stuff like that? Uh, uh, now I don't think I see anything like that helping. Uh, again, most uh, most things are in equilibrium and stable and, and no tension. And except for the signs, and we have like the sign here on this kind of tighter space, I guess. But um, that's it. The rest of the signs are not, they're like this other, but they are stable in general, right? They're not protruding too much or anything. I see no tension whatsoever. Here, no signs on this part. And on the, oh, oops, it's here. And on the other one. No long protruding signs here. We have this, but it's still in the open part. And here on the corridor, nothing again. So we do kind of have this sign and a similar one on the other one, on the other side of things. But I don't think they're like helping convey that this is this map is all about tight spaces. Personally, I don't see it. If there was more and they were a lot, there were a lot of them on the tight spaces for some reason. Then yeah, it has it would be kind of hard to miss that out. But uh, that's not the case. And uh, before I take too long, let's just go for the principle of proportion and then this critique. Proportions are about the different sizes of things, their dimensions and stuff like that. So we could talk about, for example, the size of the buildings, how big they are and how tall they are in comparison to everything around them. The bus has some also unique proportions comparison to the stuff around. We have like the all the boxes and the crates and the garbage bags with smaller proportions and sizes to them. They also help call attention to themselves because of their unique uh, sizes, you know. I'm kind of grouping things as I usually do. And what else? Um, and this thing here has not that big of a size, somewhat similar to the newsstands next to it, right? 
Uh, and uh, I'm not sure if it's fair for us to compare it to the bus. But in any case, I would say that both this and the bus are smaller than the buildings and bigger than the other stuff. Thanks for the follow, Skywolf135765 underscore. Uh, so, that said, uh, so I'm not sure. Because they have very different uh, shapes and forms, right? The bus and this thing. But let's just leave things like that. Because I think I have read, said enough for proportions. So now the question is, does any of that... You're welcome, how are you? I'm fine, what about you? So does any of what I said for proportions help with the idea of a cough map or for to shoe? So when it comes to a cough map, I don't think anything for their proportions help. There's like all the buildings and that's cool and all, but <laughs> that doesn't say anything about the for shoe. There is all the small detail things like the trash can, the garbage can, garbage bags, <laughs> the garbage bags, the crates, the wooden platforms and stuff, which is common for a number of Team Fortress 2 maps, but it's not like iconic for Team Fortress 2. And, and there is even stuff like the garbage bags are are not that common. <laughs> it's more a thing of this map. So for their sizes, I don't see any of that helping. And what would be left is like the the capture point, the sorry, the the roof here on the capture point and the bus. The bus I don't see it helping at all. And the the capture zone. Okay, I'm gonna consider this. I'm gonna consider this structure, including the this part here, the support beams. If I include that, I think it's somewhat, somewhat reasonable to compare that in size to the bus. And okay, and the thing now is that we have both things with a similar size, but just one of them is tied to the game mechanics of Team Fortress 2, so the size is not communicating it, in other words, right? Because we also have the bus with the same size. So I don't see proportions here helping convey this is a cough map for Team Fortress 2. But what about the idea of a Chinese modern city? Uh, for proportions... Well, I didn't mention the buildings. The buildings are very noticeable for how high they are, how tall they are, how big they are. There is nothing like that in the whole map. But uh, I'm not sure if they have anything unique to Chinese architecture. I mean, we can easily think about a modern city through the buildings. And uh, oh, and I guess the a number of them have the, ch the the signs with Chinese ideograms, as I mentioned. But the question is, do all of them have, you know, uh, actually maybe <laughs> like counting, the, like you have, you have, you have, okay, you have, you do, you do. Uh, this one, yeah, it have, okay, maybe if all the buildings have them, maybe it works. Let's see, if everything on this with that uh, scale has the Chinese endurance. Uh, let's see. This one... Okay, this building... Well, it's close to an another one. This one... Maybe this building specifically doesn't have it, I guess. What else? Um, this one has, this one has. This one, that one has the one on the top. And... Uh, there you have this one. So yeah. Okay, <laughs> so like uh, I have from all the buildings, only one of them I have found no signs of Chinese ideograms, which is basically this one, which is still close to the sign with, <laughs> with Chinese ideograms, much like here. So yeah, uh, okay, because there is so many such pre prevalent uh, signs with those Chinese ones, I'm going to say that uh, tied to the big buildings. I'm going to say that they're kind of like uh, working together for that vision. So to, to say not only that this is a modern city, a city of uh, post-industrial era and all that, but uh, which doesn't say much, just say post-industrial, but whatever. <laughs> Let's not get into that right now. But uh, yeah, but being so, there being so many of the signs with the ideograms on all the buildings, I will say it's kind of hard not to see them. <laughs> so on the big buildings. So I will say that, that the proportions are helping convey that it is a Chinese modern city. 
And finally, what about the idea of tight spaces and all of that? Mm. For the proportions, now I think it's gonna be hard. Uh, well, unless we talk about the proportions of the elements of space, right? Uh, ah, yeah, and I think we should do that. And I think I even did that on previous critiques from, of other maps. So now basically what we're going to be... It's kind of... It, it, I just didn't want to say the size of the space, but maybe we can do that when it comes to art. Uh, so just to recap, my analysis on the elements of space was like a tight space, very tight on the visually between the details, then uh, visually abundant like in the rooms, visually, then like downright an open area on the parts <laughs> where there is no roof up, up there, uh, some are more, again broad strokes, some are, more, are tighter than others, and especially the middle part is very open and the sky is expansive and stuff like that. So like, as I said before, I think there is somewhat of a, a pattern, I mentioned it for Unity, right? And I do think for, for proportions we also have that, this idea of the, the dimensions of the tight spaces are somewhat similar. Again, it's not perfectly, some are tighter than others, here is way tighter than other spaces. And here is a bit more open. But I do think there is enough of a pattern here on the use of the element of space. Here again, uh, visually abundant, abundant, but in other words, tighter than the open area, the way I have been phrasing this. Um, yeah, I will, I will say that the proportions of the element of space are helping. Uh, yeah, just because this is art, because in real life it's, I don't know, I think it's weird to say the size of the space or something. But maybe it's fine if it's just, uh, if it's about art. So, anyway, with that said, I can finally pass judgment! Uh, well, the, the most, the, all of the ideas for the creative view were accomplished, like, many times, right, through the principles, it's like, uh, in many different ways, good design, right? Uh, so, my only logical conclusion here is to call this a successful work of art! Congrats, designers, creators of Konking! Uh, I believe uh, everything is conveyed visually, I think you achieved everything you wanted, visually speaking, artistically speaking, for the map. So, hooray! That was it for today. Join me tomorrow for more gameplay, art critiques, and all of that good stuff. See you then, bye!